Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat. This is our TNA Lockdown 2013 review. My name is George Coles. This is my tag team partner, Brian Pillman. Oh, thanks Stone Cold. Gary Rhodes, everybody. He wasn't stunning. Cold. Stunning, Steve. There you go. Thank you, sucker. Booker T? Hey. Sucker's got to know. It's an amalgamation. Of domination? No. Not the nation of domination. Oh, I thought you said it's the nation of domination. Anyway. There we go. Going right into the show. They started off the show really hot with the, the X Division Tech Championship match. Kenny King versus Emayan versus Christian York. Uh, a lot of decent movement. Um, it was a very breakneck speed. It reminded me of the old X Division when you had guys like Kazarian, Matt Bentley, uh, the Machine Guns before they were the Machine Guns. You know, all those guys tearing it up. And Kenny King gets over. I mean, we're, I mean I'm mean, i very high on Kenny King. What do you I, think I, about the spot where he almost killed himself? Dude's a champ, man. He's a true champion, bro. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, he has got a lot of heart. And I honestly think he's what the X Division needed, not RVD. Don't get me wrong, I like RVD, mm -hmm. but he, should, he shouldn't be in the X Division. You know, he's, he's beyond that at this point. Exactly. And I believe in our preview show, we both picked Kenny King we to win. So we're both correct on this one. Great opening match. One of the better matches of the night. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Damn sure. All right there, Kurt. Uh, <laughs> Next match of our night was Joey Ryan versus Joseph Park. A match that who knows why they put it together. There's no build up to it. Joey Ryan hasn't been on TV for months. I liked it because Joseph Park got the majority of the offense in and they've, they're starting to evolve his character where he's training and now the more he trains the better he gets. I know you like the finish because it reminded me, well, it reminded you of the Yoko finish. Yeah. With the sit down squash. Look, Joseph Parks, man, I tell you, or Abyss, whatever you want to call him, the guy's a talent. He's one of the most talented big men there is. And Joey Ryan is just, his time's come, his was 82% or whatever it was, yeah. it's done. Well, no, I think they could still do something with him. Well, they dropped a whole Matt Morgan gimmick with him, so what, what's left? Well, you, he had the gimmick last night where he was oiling himself and being sleazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, don't know. I think they could do something with him. I think he's he's different enough that if he was thrown into the X Division, he could work. I don't see him as being a, a world champion contender, but I do see him as being someone that could work in the X Division, having a different gimmick than almost anyone there. I'll give you that one, and we were both correct on this one, Joseph Park. Exactly. Now, the next match of the night was our second championship match of the night. Gail Kim versus Velvet Sky. And I, I tell you what, man. I don't think there has been a more attractive match in TNA's history. These women came out, and they looked stunning. And then the match itself was an excellent match. You got two beautiful women, exactly. which is a plus, but they can wrestle. So that they're they're there for the business, you know. It just it's just a plus that they look great, and I think I'm, this I'm is very on Velvet. I think this was the best that Velvet's ever looked. And Gail Kim is always, she's an amazing looking yeah. woman. Her her husband, the, the chef. I'm sorry, he's a huge dude. Yeah, I forget what his name is, but he's a very lucky man. Yeah. And we were both correct on this one. Yeah. Well, the only thing we didn't get right, we didn't predict the the um, referee the referee thing with Gail Kim slapping Tara and Terrell and her spearing her and roughing her up a little bit. But it sets up for that feud to go forward and Velvet to move on to a different feud. So on and so forth. Exactly. Which I, it'll probably be Brooke Tessmacher because that seems to be the only three they push. Mm -hmm. They seem to have pushed Tara into the background a bit. Next match is going to be the Battle of the Robbies. Robbie versus Robbie T. I thought it was a good showcase for Robbie T. Uh, don't get me wrong, Robbie E held his own in this competition. It wasn't the best match of the night, but it was probably better than most people thought it was going to be. And on this one, you were right, I was wrong. Yeah, I picked bigger Rob, Robbie T. I think Rob Terry going forward is a guy that they're going to push it. As it, and I forget who said it, but some, one of our friends said it on um, one of our comments last week there, Robbie T is kind of their Batista. You know, I was really thinking about Robbie E could have evolved into something different. He, he's got a lot of talent. Well, he still can. But I think he was the right person to lose in this match. But I, I think Robbie T has the most... Robbie T has the most right now potential. 
Robbie E., it's kind of like when you draft in football. You want to draft someone that could come in and play right away, or you want to draft someone that you have to sit on the bench and generally bring in, but they could be the next big great. Yeah. And Robbie T. is a guy that could go in and play right away, whereas Robbie E. needs a little more seasoning before he could play with the big boys. I get you. He's going back to WCW. That's where the big boys play. Next. Where, where are your big boys? I don't see no boys. Anyways, play. That's the play. Never mind. Anyways, <laughs> next is going to be the triple threat match for the tag team gold. Aries and Rude. Yeah. There was some question about Rude showing up, and he, he showed. Versus Chavo and Hernandez. Versus Bad Influence. You were correct on this one. I was correct on this one. You picked Aries and Rude to retain. I picked Bad Influence. Just I like them. I, I like them both. Well, I thought that they were going to do a switch here. Um, so far, there wasn't. I thought there was, with them going with lesser pay-per-views, they would do more title changes on the pay-per-view, and that's the reason I picked Bad Influence. Um, either way, you were okay. I mean, Aries and Rude, the match was tremendous. I thought mm -hmm. it was really good. Probably the best match these three have... There have been a combination of these three working matches for about four or five months now. Mm -hmm. um, either Bad Influence versus Chavo and Hernandez, or Aries and Rude versus Chavo and Hernandez, or they've done a couple of these three ways, actually. Yeah. Um, I, I think this one here really showcased the tag team um, division in the company. Yeah. You know, you got two guys that were thrown, were kind of thrown together, but they, were, they meshed up so great in Aries and Rude. I'm really liking that tag team, and I, I really am a fan of Bad Influence. So four of the six are great competitors. I'm not a fan of Chavo, I'm sorry, or Hernandez. You know what I read online today, and this was funny? What's for that? a team name for Aries and, and Rude, they called them Team Hell TNO. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, I just thought it was funny. Hell to the no? And uh, basically their gimmick is kind of the Team Hell No gimmick, but a little bit different. They pull it off well. They're good wrestlers. It's just more proof that no matter what the gimmick is that you're given, if you're a good enough wrestler, you can make it work. Exactly. I'll let you introduce the next match. It was the first of the cage matches. We had Kurt Angle versus Wes Briscoe. Now, going into this, uh, this is probably out of the, the higher card matches. This was one I wasn't really looking forward to. I didn't think Wes would have to hold up his part of the bargain. And I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm gonna bite bite my tongue because Wes, Wes looked good. I mean, he didn't look great. Is he on Kurt Angle's level? No. Did Kurt Angle carry him? Prob probably a lot of it was Kurt Angle carrying him, but he looked good. He didn't look horrible. Well, you know, the best way, I mean, backstage is to, to help build a, a, one of your friends is to work against your friend. Yeah. And they're friends backstage. I mean, he's friends with. Briscoe's father and all that stuff. Oh, you're breaking KFAP. Oh, sorry there, lawyer. Anyways, I actually had this one right. Yeah, you, you gave me one. shit about this one, but I was like, I, I, I just, I seen a double cross. I had, you know, you know, you have to have a kind of a, and we'll get to that later on, but you have to have some kind of bullshit happen at the pay-per-view. You got it right, I got it wrong. Uh, D-Lo came out and helped, because you're looking at the real deal now. Ouch, ouch. Do the neck thing, I can't do the neck thing. Come well, on, have a neck. Just move your head. There you go. I can't do it right now. Anyway. <laughs> hey, Briscoe won the first Aces and Eights. Uh, I would say this is probably the biggest Aces and Eights win up until that point. I totally yeah. agree with you. Which brings us to our lethal lockdown match. The Aces and Eights team versus Team TNA. Now, this one, we both actually got wrong. We thought they would put over Aces and Eights. They did it a little bit differently than Lethal Lockdowns in the past. It still had the War Games rule, but Sting coming out as the last guy, instead of them lowering the, ro the roof down and the, the weapons hanging from the cage, Sting brought out two trash cans full of cages. Two trash can cans full of weapons into there the cage. Go. There, you there you go. There you go. I knew I'd eventually say it right. Proud of you. Exactly. Hooked on Phonics did work for me, folks. And we were both wrong on this one. I did like the finish with EY dropping the elbow. Oh, the gigantic elbow. EY it never gets the credit for being a competitor. He's done so many comedy gimmicks. And that's the thing we're talking about. He didn't work comedy last night. No, he didn't at all. I mean, he did the little thing coming in where he took his pants off and they said he's wrestling in his underwear, even though it was obviously white trunks. 
but I, I liked it. It was good. I was upset with the ending for a little bit because I'm like, really, you're gonna kill, you're gonna kill the aces' mates again. You're building them up as the biggest threat, and you kill, you're killing them again. Exactly. And and that's how I felt. Even on the commentary, which we'll get into that. The commentary last night was terrible. I don't know if Taz is just pissed off that he's working for TNA or he's trying to work his heel gimmick and it's not working out right, but he sounds like a total asshole, and I'm a Taz fan. I'm a Taz commentary fan. And Tanae sounded like he was getting frustrated with Taz. The other guy, Kenley, I think his name is, just sounds out of place. He almost sounded like when the two, two adults are fighting, the kid tries to interject to make him stop fighting. Mm. It, 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 to me, the, that was one of the major detractors on the pay-per-view was the announced team was absolutely terrible. Uh, Taz and Mike Tanay bickering, and not bickering in a good way, because Monsoon and Heenan used to bicker and make gold out of it. Exactly. I think they were trying to accomplish that. At, at, at least that's what I'm hoping. And maybe they'll see that it turned into shit and not do it no more. But uh, to me, it was it, it detracted from the pay-per-view. Yeah. Then we had the main event of the evening. We had Jeff Hardy versus Bully Ray. Hogan's brother, or son-in-law. Brother. Speaking of Hogan, before we talk about the match, we had two, two Thunder Lips. Two times the Hulk Hogan count. He was in, earlier in the show, and he came out for this match, and we had Thunder Lips appearance twice, which is a good amount for a paper. Now, these two have worked against each other for over Years. a decade. I mean, it just, and, you know, I'm not a Hardy fan, but Bully Ray always brings the best out of Hardy. You know, even when he Hardy brings the best out of Bully Ray. He does. You know, these two work so good against each other, it's, it's sickening. It is. You know, and I'm not a Hardy fan, but I always have to say he has a great match against Bully or Devon or even Edger Christian. Because, I mean, the, the, that when you think of one team, you think of all of them, you know, in a different way. I, I liked that they did the match and they were working along and you had Bischoff and Briscoe came in and they both joined forces to throw them out of the cage. Bully even let him hit that, uh, the poetry, is it poetry in motion where he jumps yeah. off his back? Right, the poetry in motion he lets him hit. They, they get rid of Briscoe and Bischoff, which makes you think that, okay, Bully's not turning tonight. And then we get towards the end of the match. Well, before we get there, we had a, there was a spot that uh, actually Jeff Hardy got a concussion on, um, where Bully Ray, Jeff Hardy's trying to escape, and they're in the middle of the top rope, and Bully Ray hits the bubble bomb on him. Pretty vicious looking spot. Then after that, we, we get the um, the whole Aces and Aces group climbs into the cage, and uh, Bully Ray and Bubba, Bully, or uh, Bully Ray and Jeff, are standing back to back looking like they're gonna face off against these guys, Bully Ray staring down Devon, who's standing on the top rope. Devon goes into his pocket, pulls out the hammer, throws it to Bully Ray. Bully Ray turns around, whacks Jeff Hardy, and we have a new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. And the, the perfect champion. Fuck yes, bitch. And the new, pre or and the president of the Ace and Ace is exposed. Exactly. About time. And Bully Ray went into ECW Bubba Ray Dudley mode and was just ripping in the Hogan, ripping in the brook. He said, I, I fooled you and I screwed you. Then grabs the mic, says, I'm the, I'm the president of Aces and Aids. And the, the best line of the night while he still had the mic live, I don't know if he realized it was live or not. I mean, it looked like he was talking into it though when he said, Diva, let that bitch cry. Talking about, talking about Brock Hogan. I thought it was, this is the best thing that's happened to Aces and Eights ever. Oh yeah. This is better than they're coming in. It was very predictable. We both predicted this was what was going to happen, and we both predicted Bully Ray winning. However, it was still great to see. It was good because it gives the Aces and Eights a world champion, a guy that's at the top of the at the top of the company. Um, to me, Bully Ray adds nothing but credibility to the group. He does. Which had none. And the thing is, before he turned into babyface bully with Hulk Hogan, 
he was the top heel in the company. Yeah. I mean, he went from a top heel to the top baby face and right back to the top heel, the most hated heel right now. And then uh, they got the uh, they got the NWO reaction where fans started showering them with stuff, which I read reports today that there were fans planning to start the throwing of items. So to me, that's just dangerous on TNA's part. It is. Why would you encourage fans to throw crap into the ring? You don't know what they're going to throw. They're going to throw bottles. I mean, in in this this era. Fans are a lot more dangerous now than what they were back in the day. In that's certain expect. I'm not saying certain. they're more dangerous, but with what we know about concussions and stuff of that nature, why would you invite people to throw bottles or stuff of that nature into the ring? You hit Bully Ray in the head, you hit one of the Aces Eights in the head, it cuts his eye out, you know, gives one of them a concussion. You're putting a guy on the shelf. If it's spontaneous, it works. If you're the company promoting, hey, throw your garbage into the ring, it does, to me that's a little bit bushy. I'll give you that. However, it wasn't, before I knew that that's what they did, it was a great visual to end with. It reminded me of the NWO. No. Yep. And, you know. But overall, we had more right than we had wrong. Um, I had to, we both had TNA winning no, wrong. We had a even, didn't we? Well, we both had TNA winning wrong. You had Robbie E winning wrong. And I had And, and, and I had Risco winning wrong. So we were tied. Oh, no, I, then I got the Aries and Rudy. Yeah, you got Aries and Rune, I got Bad Influence, so I got that one wrong, too. But um, we're going to go into our ratings for this, if you haven't seen us before. The ratings we use for TNA, it's a 1 to 5 scale, 5 being the best, 1 being the worst. A 1's a Garrett Bischoff, a 2's a Christian Yor, 3's a James Storm, 4's a Christopher Daniels, 5 is Kurt Angle. What would you give the show overall, Gary? You know what, And I've been very critical of them, but I like the outcome. I'm going with a Daniels, number 4. You know, I'm going to go right along the lines with the with the Daniels. Um, I would have given it an angle if the announce team was better. The announce team is what takes it from a five to a four in my opinion. Well, the, those what, what took it from a three to a four to me, the, the announce didn't get on my nerves, um, was the end of the main event. Exactly. I was really un, unimpressed with TNA winning. I did like the elbow drop. I'm not denying that, but you're trying to build these, this faction up. You don't have them lose. You haven't put Sting on the shelf for more than a week. That's my opinion of it. And, you know, overall, a very good pay-per-view. Um, I wish they would have built some of the matches more. But the, to me, the only thing that stopped it from being a 5 out of 5 was the announced team. And they were that bad. They were so bad, I almost dropped it to a 3. But one of my all-time favorite wrestlers won the World Championship on this pay-per-view. So it's hard to... It's hard to say, not give it something really high. But basically, that's all i got to say about this review. Anything you need at that? That's it. My name is George Coles. I'm Gary Rhodes. And this has been Heel Heat.